All right, boys, I was just thinking about something, okay? By the way, Spring Bulk Day 23, I think it is. Anyway, boys, let me get this angle a little better. I was, like, feeling skinny and everything, right? Hey, actually, we're keeping the shirt on for now, okay? And I was like, man, what's up with this, you know? And then I got a chest pump the other day, and I noticed that my upper chest was starting to really, really fill out, especially compared to before. You could argue whether it's small. You could argue about my chest looking bad, but it looked better than it did before. I'll tell you that right now. And I had this pump, you know, and I probably was 200 carbs deep for the day, you know, six sets of incline, whatever, or six sets of total of chest work, some dumbbell flies, some incline press, all that. And I'm literally looking and I see a, uh, like, I've always had like an upper chest division, right? You could probably see it even through the shirt right here, but, um, it was super like abnormally pronounced and obviously that happens with a pump, but I've had ch chest pumps every week for a while now. So anyway, <clears throat> I was thinking, okay, boys, I'm just antsy to get this thing off because I just want to freaking flex, but I was thinking and I'm like, wait, I can incline press 245 for three. And that got me thinking, dude, if I, like, I literally can, like, that's kind of a lot of weight, dude. Most people cannot do that. Now, am I saying that if you train for it, you couldn't? No. But I was just thinking, like, dude, if I knew that I just turned 19, that at 19 years old, I'd be inclined pressing 245 for a triple, you know, and I would have been shocked because, I mean, just like less than a month ago, I was doing 40 pounds less okay uh for the same amount of reps so my strength literally improved 40 pounds for the same amount of reps in like less than a month i don't know how i think it's just from uh going from a totally depleted state to like being super carved up and plus even on my last bulk i really didn't carb up that much so it was more so just you know eating a lot in general but i didn't really know about carbs so anyway though bro we're gonna get some huge Arnold pecs soon. It's only a matter of time. I mean, here's the thing, guys. If you have size goals, you better have strength goals too. Like, if I want 20 inch arms, I gotta be preacher curling single arm. At least, at least we're talking the 80, okay? And that's a, that's a, a big thing for most people. But that's the truth. If I could single arm dumbbell preacher curl the 80, okay, with clean form all the way down, all the way up, and all you say, oh, that'll you'll get injured. Not if you're adapted. If you're adapted to it, you won't get injured, okay? If you rush and do it, yeah, you probably will. But don't rush and you won't get injured, okay? So right now I'm doing the 60 to about here. I'm able to bend about this much and come up for like, I think I did like five reps last week. Or not last week. This was actually yesterday. What the heck? I was thinking totally different. This was yesterday. The time's flying, boys. Um... 60 like this, but I could do 50 full elbow lockout, big range of motion, right? And uh, time after time after time of me doing that for tons of reps, okay, just sitting on the preacher bench, my arms are literally growing like crazy, you know, especially during a bulk, man. When I get up to like, I want to get up to probably the 70s on the single arm dumbbell preacher curl for this bulk. And uh, you guys are gonna see the, the arm gains. I mean, honestly, like I said, if you have if you have size goals, which I I want twenty something inch arms, I'm thinking I could do it, boys. I mean, you guys see, obviously, the insertions are there, the genetics are there. I think my biceps are pretty good. They could be a lot better for sure, but I think they're pretty good. And uh, lately, I've been just really focusing on my uh, triceps. I'd say I could do a lot better, right? Like. I could be putting triceps first on chest day. But to be honest, I think my chest needs a lot more work than my arms. So that's why I'm not doing everything by the book for arm training right now, except for really just biceps. I put biceps first on my back day, which is that a good idea? Probably not as somebody who has fairly dominant arms in my physique. But um, anyway, though, coming back to the point, you have to have strength goals, okay? If you have size goals, my headphone just fell through my shirt. 
Uh, if I want 20 inch arms, okay, and a lot of you are going to tell me I can't do that. I don't care because I'm going to have it eventually. I have a couple things in mind. I already said this, the 80 pound single arm dumbbell preacher, okay, for like a crispy, crispy set of six. And then, and maybe even, you know, six to 10 between there. You mean to tell me if I could put 80 from here to here for a set of 10, my biceps wouldn't be massive? Plus, triceps, okay? What's the story with triceps? What should be the strength goal there? I would say general pressing strength is going to be a lot of what you need for your tricep size, but that can only get you so far. I think isolation is king if you want to have maximal development for any muscle. So go for, uh, and a lot of you might think you can't do this. I don't care. Go for like a couple plates added, a couple 45s added to the full stack for tricep pushdowns. Right now, um, when I'm fresh, I could do probably about, I could probably do a 45 added to the stack because I've already done a 10 added and I repped it out like it was nothing to the full stack. And so I'm thinking, you know, 25 would probably feel fairly light also. It's only 15 pounds more. And then probably after that, 45 would be a little ambitious, but I think I could get it done. And over the course of this bulk band, you're going to see me doing two plates on the tricep pushdown as well as the full sack. So those are some freaking goals, okay? I'm thinking for 20-inch arms, I probably would need to do three plates added to the sack. And as you know, tricep pushdowns are king in terms of triceps, okay? Now, if you want a little bit more of a stable movement, just go with something that doesn't take as much core. Because I feel like a lot of guys struggle with holding themselves down, myself included, during that tricep pushdown, you know? Because then you get all this ab, you know, potential force, right? Having to pull yourself down. And that can be a little bit hard because you're expending energy all over the place. But especially if you're a bigger guy, like let's say you're, I don't mean to just glorify the 200s because I feel like people are doing that way too much these days. But if you're in the 200s, you probably don't need to freaking worry about stability on a pushdown as much. I'd say it's probably just, if you're going super heavy, you might need more. You might need more weight to hold you down. And then that's when you would switch the variation and say, okay, let me get good at, I don't know, like a close grip incline press. Let me get good at uh, overhead extensions. Let me get good at a JM press. That's probably a really good option. But you guys know what the freak I'm saying. And then also, uh, don't neglect the brachialis, okay? This muscle right here in the middle. You need to get that big too. For a while, I never did hammer curls and I neglected it. But I don't want to sit here and say that that was a mistake um, because I think we, we all make mistakes in our lifting journey. We all could do better at points. But, I mean, dude, if I was you, I'd start doing hammer curls right now and I would do them on the preacher bench. So when you're doing your single arm preachers, which I love, I totally love them. I do two sets each arm, supinated. So I do one set. And then I rest for like a minute and then I switch arms and do another set, rest for a minute, same thing, same thing. And then once I'm done with supinated, okay, I do neutral wrist and get some hammer curl involvement, right? Oh my gosh, I kind of feel like Lee Priest right now a little bit. Oh my gosh, look at the tricep, dude. That's kind of nuts. Anyway. Get some freaking hammer curls in. I do it just for literally one set at the end of my workout. I, I, or not at the end of my workout, at the end of my supinated curls, I'll switch to hammer. You guys get it. And with the strength curve, okay, I'm going to explain this real quick. Your brachialis has very excellent leverage at lower degrees of elbow bend, okay? So anything really towards this bottom third, you know, to even bottom half, your your brachialis is going to have really good leverage to flex the elbow. So you could take advantage of that and say, well, preacher curls are hardest at the bottom half. So 
I'm going to flip my wrist to neutral and use my brachialis maximally and get huge amounts of motor unit recruitment. And if you're going to take advice from anybody, take advice from the guy that's freaking, I would call myself arm dominant. I'm not saying that my arms are humongous, but proportionally they kind of are. So I freaking hope you guys have a freaking good one. I'm trying to get that Robbie Robinson build. You know what I'm saying? That Arnold Schwarzenegger build. That freaking Lee Priest. Ugh. All right, boys. Hope you have a good one. I was real excited to make this because, like I said, my upper chest is finally starting to fill out. You guys can clearly see I got a little shelf going, especially in the, in the flex there. This is just totally unflexed. Now we're going to flex. Ugh. All right. Have a good one.